Welcome back everybody to the Machine Learning Freelancer tutorial series. This is part five. In part four I talked a little bit about my nightmare scenario with a client who tried to jack me out of $500. I tell you the warning signs how to make sure that doesn't happen to you. So if you missed it, make sure to go check it out. Today's video I'm going to talk to you about how you should get paid. So on most of these platforms they have a couple different payment method options. Of course we've settled on Upwork and on Upwork, you have basically two main options. You can get paid um, on, as a fixed price or as an hourly contract. So let's talk about the uh, fixed price budgets first. So I like these for smaller projects that I know I can get done in a relatively short amount of time and I can maximize my dollar per hour value, right? As a freelancer, you're always looking to maximize your income while simultaneously optimizing for quality to the client, right? You don't want to produce shitty work because then they're going to leave you a bad review and the jig is up, right? Then you're then it's game over, right? You have to produce good work, but you want to be paid a premium for that because we are doing premium work, right? Writing code is not something everybody can do. Good developers, which is to say developers who are easy to work with are hard to come by. And so if you're a good developer, you should definitely be charging a premium. And fixed price contracts allow you to do that. You have two different options. You can get paid uh, at the end of the contract, or you can get paid by milestones. Now, this is going to depend on how the project is structured. If you're just writing a quick little script to do one simple thing, then you may want to get paid uh, just all at once at the end of the contract. Now, keep in mind, you've already vetted the client to make sure they don't have bad reviews. You've, you've uh, made sure they don't exhibit any of the red flags we talked about in part four. And so you, you can have a decent amount of trust that the client isn't going to pull any shenanigans down the line, and it's okay to get paid at the end for the work you're doing. If it's a longer and more involved project, you want to set it up by milestones. Now, this is very tricky. Um, typically, what you'll find on most projects is that stuff takes two to three times longer than you expect, and that is a rule. I learned that in graduate school, it is an absolute rule. Every time I've said this project will take X hours, it is always 2X. So keep that in mind when you're budgeting the uh, amounts for each milestone. You need to take into account the fact that you're going to encounter problems, you're going to have issues, general snaggery that is going to make it take longer, and hence you should get compensated more because you are suffering more, right? So um, if, if you're doing a longer project, definitely break it down by milestone. Think very, very carefully about the deliverables so that way there are no surprises for you or the client, and make sure you're getting fairly compensated. Now, for longer, more ongoing projects, I like the hourly payment model. And this is for a number of reasons. So on Upwork, when a client is uh, looking for freelancers or when they're posting a job, they can actually put in the number of hours worked as a criteria for the job. Now, you can still apply. It just means that you don't meet their preferences, right? You're free to apply, but you they may overlook you because you don't meet that particular requirement. Uh, and then, of course, the way you, you get hours is by taking hourly contracts. And so one reason you love hourly contracts is because it gives you a little bit um, more visibility in the search engine, gives you better visibility when you're applying for jobs. And, of course, the other reason is you get fairly compensated for your time. Now, this is a double-edged sword here because if you're like me, sometimes you'll find yourself thinking about a project trying to solve one little issue of it. And, of course, you can't really bill for that time, so you have to be very careful in policing yourself to make sure you're not doing too much work outside of billable time. Uh, the other downside is that it installs, uh, you have to install an app on your PC or laptop that monitors your usage. It tells the client, you know, number of clicks per hour, number of keystrokes, general activity. So if you just leave it running, they're gonna know, right, there's no activity. And that's the danger in uh, thinking too much while you're while you're billing for time, right, is that you don't want to give the appearance, even if you're sitting there actively thinking how you want to approach a problem, which is billable time because you are, you know, you could be using those CPU, you know, those brain cycles for something else, but you're using it for the project, it's billable time, but it can give the appearance of impropriety, so you have to be very careful with that. And the more you charge, the more scrutiny you're going to invite, so just keep that in mind. Uh, so you have to install the app, it monitors your usage, and it takes screenshots of what you're doing. So be careful with what you have open. Um, if you have two monitors, set it to record one monitor and put your music, your Pandora, whatever, on the other monitor. Uh, if you're having, you know, using Skype chat or whatever, put that on the other monitor to make sure they don't see it. And, of course, don't, don't get paid for chatting with people, but, you know, it, it happens. Sometimes people will send you a message. Um, and, of course, with... 
Uh, hourly contracts, you can bill for the amount of time you talk to the client or their team. Now, this is incredibly valuable because uh, you want to guard your time, right? You are the expert. You are the data scientist. You need to be paid for your expertise. And if you're on a fixed price contract, you can't really do that, right? They're going to abuse the holy hell out of your time because they can't, right? You're not getting paid by the hour, so they can just tell you, they can, uh, you know, summon you in Slack or in, or Skype or whatever messaging app at any point in time, and you basically are expected to respond very quickly. Whereas if you're doing it on an hourly basis, you can respond and you can bill them for that time. Um, and I do that all the time. If I'm if I am conversing with a client's team, I'm billing for that time because uh, it's time that could be doing something else, right? I can't be working on another project if I'm focused on their project. So. Uh, that's just something else to keep in mind. All in all, I prefer the hourly contracts. I like to have a nice fat hourly rate. Um, but if it's something I can do quite quickly, I'll gravitate towards a fixed price contract. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that uh, how often the contracts uh, end. So in a fixed price, uh, in a hourly contract, typically it's ongoing. It could be one, three months, something like that, right? Writing software takes time. And so it's going to be a while before you get that feedback. You can screw up a lot of stuff with the client in that time. Keep that in mind. But the flip side of that is if you're doing fixed price contracts, you can turn and burn those real quickly and get your rating up there real quick. So for beginners, I like to recommend you do lots of fixed price contracts. Um, or if you do hourly for a smaller job, that's fine, but just make sure you negotiate the full price in, in, you know, beforehand with the client. Um, but all in all, I prefer a fixed price for, for shorter contracts and the hourly for the longer contracts. What are your experiences? Let me know what you think. Any questions, leave them below. Make sure to subscribe. Hit the bell icon so you get notified when I release new content. Thanks for listening. See you all in the next video.